How dangerous are China's nuclear ambitions? How is massive flooding affecting China's food supply? And who does China want to win the U.S. election? That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. On Monday, I told you about how the Chinese Communist Party is seeking to double its nuclear weapons arsenal. Well, now, Hu Xi Jin, the editor-in-chief of my favorite Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, said China needs to be ready to use those nukes to deter the United States. On Weibo, the Chinese version of Twitter, he said, Hurry up and build more nuclear warheads in sufficient numbers to deter the United States, and we must seize the day. A stronger nuclear arsenal is the only key countermeasure to balance the U.S. arrogant attitude. However, not everyone in China agrees. Yang Chengjun, a nuclear strategy expert, responded by writing, This kind of hype will only provide hostile countries a reason to attack us. It will heighten the anxiety of neighboring countries and push them towards the United States for nuclear protection. It will also arouse unwarranted domestic dissatisfaction with the country and the military for its inaction. Well, that's all well and good, Yang. But maybe you're not seeing the hostile actions being taken by the U.S. against China. For example, check out this exclusive Global Times article which to clarify is an actual article, not a joke. It says, the U.S. has brutally unpacked a container with 60 pieces of furniture ordered by the Chinese delegation to the United Nations and dismantled the wrappings of 12 pieces. The move seriously violated international practices, and it is expected that China may take reciprocal measures against the U.S. And you know what that means. China is going to brutally unpack U.S. furniture. So take that. You know, we've been doing this show for eight years, and we will never write satire that's better than the actual stuff coming out of Chinese state-run media. There is no joke about the pettiness of the Chinese Communist Party that can compare with them actually publishing an article complaining about unpacking furniture. I feel so defeated. They just come up with so much great stuff. Like this, Cold War Cabal. Brilliant. Hey, maybe I should hire someone from state-run media. Hu Xi Jin, call me. After devastating floods hit the Yangtze River in southern China, devastating floods have now hit the Yellow River in northern China. That's on top of the recent typhoon. Typhoon Hagupit made landfall at Luqing City in eastern China's Zhejiang province around 3.30 a.m. on August 4th. Many roads were sealed off. Amid the heavy rains and wind, trees were toppled, billboards fell down, and cars were smashed by falling objects. Many streets were submerged in water. Public transportation has been suspended in several cities. The flooding has a lot of people concerned about China's food supply. The area along the Yangtze River accounts for 70% of the country's rice production. China relies heavily on imported food, but tense relations between China and much of the Western world and the coronavirus pandemic may make importing a lot of food trickier in the future. Don't worry, Chinese communist officials have a solution. Chinese Vice Premier Hu Chunhua told the provinces to make sure crop yields won't be reduced this year. And he said governors would be punished if they failed to uphold the promise, including with dismissals. Why, that's basically what they did back in the 1950s. Local officials had to make sure production met central party quotas. So they just made up the numbers. And that led to the Great Famine that killed tens of millions of people. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to have everything work out fine. But if telling government officials to lie about crop yields doesn't fix the problem, Chinese leader Xi Jinping has another solution. Operation Empty Plate. I did not make that up. This week, Xi Jinping made a speech about the importance of food security. He called on the nation to end food waste. And in the tradition of all Communist Party top-down initiatives, it's up to the local authorities to implement Operation Empty Plate which means 
Get ready for overzealous performative micromanaging to impress the boss. In Chongqing, officials issued a statement promising to implement Xi's guidance, setting up LED screens with prompts to establish a frugal consumption reminder system, as well as measures to supervise consumers to eat frugally. How will they supervise whether people are eating frugally? Well, the city of Wuhan has a great idea. The Wuhan Catering Industry Association called on restaurants in the city to issue a system called N-1 ordering, whereby a group must order one dish fewer than the number of diners. Yeah, that makes sense. The government should definitely force restaurants to force people to limit how much food they can eat. So if there are four people in your group, you can only order three dishes. If there are two people, you can only order one dish. And if you're by yourself, you can cry into your empty plate about how sad and alone you are. Sounds like Operation Empty Plate is going to be a huge success. But there are far bigger problems facing China than a potential shortage of food. There could also be a potential shortage of iPhone production. The owner of Foxconn, the guys who make your iPhone, says China can no longer be the world's factory. What would Steve Jobs do? In other news, a fourth Canadian citizen has been sentenced to death in China. This is on top of the two Canadian citizens, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver, who have been in various forms of detention for a year and a half. It's all part of China's hostage diplomacy. These are political arrests and death sentences in response to the arrest of Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou in Canada. If you'd like to learn more about how China's hostage diplomacy puts foreigners at risk in China, Check out our latest China Unscripted podcast with Peter Dahlin, who was detained and forced to confess on Chinese state-run television. I'll put a link below. A new report by the National Counterintelligence and Security Center looks at how hostile foreign countries view the upcoming U.S. election. According to the report, China and Iran are Team Biden. Russia is Team Trump. Guess which one of those the media is focusing on? What kind of interference does China have to do to get some respect around here? It's like China is the middle child of foreign election interference. Pay attention. A new report from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute has uncovered what it calls an unsophisticated disinformation campaign by China. You mean the people behind the Cold War cabal headline are unsophisticated? The report says the Chinese regime created fake accounts on Twitter and Facebook for highlighting racial tensions, amplifying criticism of the U.S.'s handling of the coronavirus crisis, and political and personal scandals linked to President Donald Trump. The report also found that the Facebook accounts also all use women's names. I can see why it's unsophisticated. I mean, who listens to women, am I right? Oh, what's that, Shelley? Hmm. Professional scammers recommend creating fake women's accounts because it's easier to persuade people to follow them. That's why I always listen to Shelley. U.S. authorities have seized shipments of nearly 20,000 fake driver's licenses, mostly from China. And I say thank you. I really don't need my next fake ID made in China. They might botch it. Now you might think, how could criminals in China get away with producing fake U.S. IDs on such a massive scale? Is the Chinese Communist Party keeping a close watch on everything that goes on in the country? Oh. As you may recall, a few weeks ago, the U.S. ordered the Chinese consulate in Houston, Texas to shut down, and consulate staff were seen mysteriously burning a bunch of documents. And now, this. Two shred trucks stand in front of the Chinese consulate in New York. A dozen containers of shredded papers were taken away. I wonder if we'll have some more news about the Chinese consulate in New York in the coming days. You know what, they're probably just trying to get a head start on that uh, fall cleaning. And now, it's a time when I answer a question from you, a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. YouTube would have put us out of business by frequently demonetizing episodes and sometimes even removing them. So, Jordan Larimore asks, on June 4th, 1989, the CCP cracked down on protesters in Beijing, but from my understanding, more cities had protests. 
What happened in the other cities? An excellent question, Jordan. Yes, protests were happening all throughout China in the spring of 1989. According to the Tiananmen Papers, protests broke out in 63 cities across the country. And for the most part, they were also crushed, though not always in as spectacular a fashion as in Beijing. In fact, back then, Xi Jinping was the local CCP committee secretary of Ningde City in Fujian province, and he was very eager to follow the party's guidelines on the protest movement. Young Xi Jinping issued these orders. First, we must recognize and follow the instructions of the central government and the party. Second, we must resolutely stop students from entering Fujian, and the slogans shall not enter Ningde or Fujian. Basically, that led to checkpoints being put up and students were encouraged to go home. But as far as I know, there was no big massacre in Fujian. And for being a good lapdog of the party, Xi Jinping got promoted. However, there were big crackdowns in some other Chinese cities. If you're interested in this, a good book is The People's Republic of Amnesia by Louisa Lim. She interviews people who lived through a second, almost forgotten massacre in the city of Chengdu which saw big demonstrations in Tianfu Square. But the world mainly knows about Tiananmen Square, because so many foreign reporters happened to be in Beijing at the time for the state visit of Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. And stuff that gets caught on camera carries a lot more weight. After all, the camera adds 10 pounds. Thanks for your question, Jordan. And thank you for watching. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe. Even if you already are a subscriber, double check because YouTube has secretly unsubscribed people before. And if you like uncensored news about China, please support the show on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash to see how. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.